Today, we're going to be covering early Australian black metal. I discovered not quite 50 black metal bands from the 80s and 90s from this region, Oceania, Australasia, and today we're going to be covering the top six as well as a bonus of A and B tier. Oi, you fucking cunt! Now, I'm sure you can guess, today we're going to be covering black metal from Australia. Now, not only Australia, uh, Oceania, Australasia, the, the greater region. So that's going to include like Papua New Guinea, uh, New Zealand, and, and the Nisias, Melanesia, Polynesia, all the Nisias. But of course we're going to be focusing on the nation of Australia more so than anywhere else. Because without actually crunching the numbers, I think, I believe Australia produces more black metal bands uh, than probably any other nation outside of Europe. Um, they, they have a small population, and especially during this period that I'm talking about, the 80s and 90s, uh, I believe there were numerous cities with more inhabitants than the entire continent of Australia. Bombay, Mexico City, Tokyo, ones of that nature. Uh, now it is true Australia has been increasing in population in the last 20 years very quickly with a lot of uh, immigrants from mostly Southeast Asia I've noticed. But anywho, uh, black metal did start early in, in Australia uh, in the 80s with Slaughter Lord is maybe the one that helped to define what you think of when you think of Australian black metal, that distinct sound. It's, it's a black thrash more than anything else. Now, don't get me wrong, they, they are, do not exclusively play that subgenre of black metal. There is a wide variety of high quality styles of black metal coming out of Australia. And we'll go over those, not only in the, the top six, which is going to cover all of uh, Australasia, but I'm going to give a, a bonus list at the end uh, of A and B tier bands that you're going to want to check out as well. So I'm going to head down under. This is a 20 hour flight, nearly an entire day. I'm not looking forward to this at all. I hope I can get some sleep. But in the meantime, while I'm traveling, I'm going to give you an abbreviated history of this region and its relation to black metal. Three minute history. What hat should I wear? Actually, I picked this one up in Micronesia, one of the Nisias, about 20 years ago. Hopefully I can find that pick. I'll put it over here. Anywho, I'll see you on the flip side. The term Australasia denotes Australia, the country, New Zealand, and sometimes Papua New Guinea, which was once part of the German colonial empire. I, I very much hope to visit this place. They, they still have actual cannibal headhunters there. How cool is that? It's the range of Australasia has something to do with the Wallace line, the Weber line. One of those divides that have to do with how the flora and fauna uh, are distributed across the, the area. And the term Oceania, well, that includes all of Australasia as well as Polynesia, Melanesia, and Micronesia. All those thousands of islands throughout the Central and South Pacific Ocean. But I'm only going to give you a brief historical overview of Australia and New Zealand. Australia, the smallest continent, home to most of the marsupials, such as wombats, wallabies, and the Tasmanian devil, as well as those weird egg-laying mammals, Ugh. and a lot of poisonous and generally scary nature, but also very cute animals, like the tree kangaroo and the rat kangaroo. First inhabited by humans when the aboriginals island hopped from Southeast Asia about 50,000 years ago, using a land bridge which 
had stretched from New Guinea all the way to Tasmania. These aborigines invented a didgeridoo and a boomerang, used to slay kangaroos. The Dutch briefly visited in 1606, but a British captain by the names of James Cook was the first to contact the indigenous folk, and that wasn't until 1770. These indigenous folk had one rule, don't climb their rock. At this time, there were 314,000 or so aborigines living in approximately 250 tribes, mostly near the Murray River. Soon, the island became a penal colony. As for New Zealand, the first human inhabitants were the Maori, who only arrived in the 14th and 15th century in two waves. They were a very warlike Polynesian people. And much like Australia, it was the Dutch who first contacted the area in the 1600s, but it was the British once again in the 1700s when James Cook's voyage took him throughout the area when they first contacted the Maori. The only indigenous mammal on the island is a bat. Penguins live there. New Zealand is renowned for its film industry, really just due to one individual and his amazing filmography. Oi! Upside down. What do? I gotta get straightened out here. All right. My feet are firmly planted. I think we got the camera turned upside down, so I think I look right side up to you because you're most likely in the northern hemisphere watching this, and uh, I don't want to get you dizzy watching me up upside down since I'm I'm down under now. Anywho, uh, we're gonna start with the top six. Now, the, the majority of these bands are going to be found in uh, Australia, uh, with a handful uh, uh, elsewhere, and I'll note those. If, if I don't note anything, they're, they're Aussie bands. Something else I, I've been failing to do in these videos is sharing some of my collection with you when I talk. So, so I put together some albums here to show you what I'm talking about. The first one we're going to start with is Spear of Longinus. I would recommend their 1999, not a Brahma. It's very primitive, punkish at times, catchy, thrashy. It's good stuff. In fact, here it is. There is an alternate cover. I've never seen it in real life, uh, but I do enjoy this album regardless of the cover. I would also recommend you check out uh, some of their later works. They got kind of strange. Warlust with their album Blood and Valor from 1995. Now this is a very primitive war metal style of black metal that I think is more at home typically in Canada, South America, Finland, uh, but this is, it really hits. It's some of the best. Uh, K.K. Warslut was in this band, but I don't think he was on this album. I, I give a slight edge to this album over the previous one. But the artwork on both is stupendous. Either I would love to have as a, a back piece tatted on me, but I've got too much back there already, I think. Uh, but yeah, this is the artwork I'm referring to.
I think this is the earliest example I'm, I'm giving in my top six here from 1994. This is Gospel of the Horns, the Satanist dream. This is the prototypical black thrash that you think of when you think of Australian black metal. Very good stuff. Epic at times. But I would highly recommend, and this goes against my channel. Normally, I'm just talking about that early black metal, the 80s and 90s. But I highly recommend the 2002 release by Gospel of the Horns also. Here, this way. Upside down. I got to remember to turn everything the other way because I'm down under. Number three, we have the Soul New Zealander band, a Kiwi band on this list. It's Demoniac. Now, I got into Demoniac in 95, when they only had one album out at the time, and I love that. But they only progressed and changed, and I followed them uh, very avidly until they broke up in 99, unfortunately. Uh, but they had a very unique style, a, a mixture of Euro power metal, like almost flower metal with black metal which uh, is, is a great combination of genres, in, in, in my eyes at least. But I guess it didn't go over too well because they ended up breaking up at the end of the 90s, moved to the opposite side of the globe, and uh, found fame uh, as Dragon Force. Uh, they were Dragonheart briefly, but I, I think there's a Brazilian band that they already was a power metal band with that same name. So they changed uh, names to Dragon Force, got a new singer, who I don't think enjoys the intoxicants as much as or Lindsay from Demoniac, uh, at least from the, the footage I've seen from their live shows. But hands down, if you like Herman Lee in Dragon Force, you have to check out their early stuff here. And Sam Toten, this is the album to which I refer. But... Uh, the, the, you want to check this one out also, if, if you enjoy that. It, it, it's not as really in the power metal department, but it's definitely moving in that direction. Number two, we have a single by the band Abyssic Eight, Betrayed. I've seen this released as both 99 or 98. Uh, I'm uncertain which date is correct, but unfortunately I can't put their full length on here, uh, where you will find the song Betrayed uh, a year later in, in the year 2000. It's, I'm sure you've heard me mention it before, Suicidal Emotions by Abyssic Eight, one of the the best albums of all time. It's probably the album that's hit me the most emotionally throughout the years, and maybe the album I've listened to more than any other album on earth. 
Uh, but this is early black metal 80s and 90s, so I'm not including that. But I am going to show you uh, the album cover because uh, I love it. The, the song Betrayed is on here, so uh, you see the connection, right? That's all that. Oh, also, uh, you know, important in these days to stay true. And, and uh, of course, thanks for doing. Check it out. know the answer to this if you've talked to me about black metal for more than three or four minutes from 1997 by far the best re-release back up oh i can't can't keep forgetting the gravity is up weird down here also and uh you know Vinyl, this is the black, this is the white, picture disc, oh. this is an amazing album of, of black, thrash, death, doom, it's epic, it's speedy, I, I don't know how else to describe it to you other than just listen, an amazing artwork, but don't stop there. You'll want to listen to their next album for certain. It's a little bit more progressive as well as their previous one. It's a, it's a bit more primitive. I have a few copies of this one also in various formats. Oh, I also got this one. How rare is this? Original. Check it out. You will not regret it. I guarantee. Gravity is getting to me, uh, so I decided to sit down. I'm going to go over my list of A and B tier Australasian early black metal with you, uh, and then I'll put it on the screen. But I want to give you some thoughts about some of these because there's some very high quality stuff here that I want you to delve into, really. Check it out. For example, the first one I go with here is Atomizer. Uh, atomic po metal power. This is a perfect example of that that Aussie black thrash sound, and they only got better into the 2000s. So, so follow their work. Check it out. It, it's rather sporadic, unfortunately. Cauldron Black Ram. Now, this is a, a 
pirate-themed black metal band. Uh, now, you might think, oh, is it similar to Running Wild? No, it's not. Uh, but that doesn't mean it really anything. Uh, it's good in and of itself. Uh, definitely check them out. E grade. We battle for victory. This was an early example of the, the mixture of the hardcore crust with black metal. Very rare to do so at this point, being in the 90s. Other bands have done it since then, but I would say to a lesser effect, this is the best of that combination, for me at least. It, it is definitely an almost made it. It would probably be number seven for me. Long Voyage Back here with their their first one. That's the most black metal one. It's a self-titled. They became more gothic and doomy, progressive as their career went on. It's still very good, but if you're looking for some black metal, check out their, their first one, their self-titled. Uh, this one's a little bit more controversial. Horde, Hella Guzbart. I've enjoyed them since 95. I, I bought the the tape, the cassette tape, when I was in Thailand, maybe in 97, sometime when I was there. But I lost it, I guess. I don't know what I did with it. Maybe I sold it. Uh, very good. I don't care what anybody says. This is uh, top-notch, pseudo-Norwegian black metal from this era. This one might be the, the most rare piece in my collection. A band from Guam, of all places, Johnny Midnight. And the demons from hell. This uh, is a punk-influenced, death-influenced black metal. Uh, put out a single at the end of the 90s here. Uh, really good stuff. Now from New Zealand, once again stepping away from Australia, we have Lord Goat. They put out this album called The Dead Will Eat the Flesh of the Living. This is black grind. Top notch. Over the top. This is like go get them stuff. Love it. Uh, Martyr. They've been around since the 80s. Check out their self-titled. Very good stuff. Nazul. Black Seed. This might be the best symphonic black metal out of Australia. Uh, Portal. Uh, Death-influenced black metal, weird experimental, odd time changes, and, and all that you become accustomed to. The, this, uh, the one I would recommend is, is their self-type that uh, doesn't have as much of the experimentation as you've come to know them, and it's much raw-er, but you need to hear this to know from where they came, and it's good in and of itself. Check it out. Next I would recommend is Rock, R-O-K. This is satanic. This is a, a rocking type of black metal from the front man from that early Australian seminal black metal band, Sadistic Execution. Now, are they death metal or black metal? In my eyes, they're definitely black metal. That's why they're on this list. I would definitely check out the Magus. It's... Uh, it's damn good. It's black metal. Uh, now, I mentioned Slaughter Lord earlier. This is uh, one of the seminal black metal bands that helped to define the style of what you think of when you hear Aussie black metal. This is that thrash stuff. But the, the front man uh, has found much more fame uh, as a comedian. Uh, it's, you know, it's nothing Australians like more. Is it? <laughs> and, uh, good fucking opera, hey? <laughs> Oh yeah, fuck the cricket, get me down to that opera. <laughs> Let's watch this fat cunt sing. <laughs> I would have gone to the opera growing up. I'll, I'll admit to you right now, I'm, I'm not a very good Australian. Uh, I gave it a go, but it didn't fucking work out. You know. I tried, but fuck, you know, you know, I just never suited the place particularly. The country's beautiful, but you know, I was just... Also, Stargazer, another one of the more famous black metal bands from this region. Their album, Born, uh, very good. It, it's got the odd, odd time signatures and that experimentation and whatnot. Good stuff. Uh, getting near the end here, a Vomitor. That's another one of the black thrash style. 
uh, the, the album Roar of War only hints at how catchy they would become later. This is uh, not as good as some of their 2000s work. So another band I would say definitely follow into the 2000s because they produced high quality stuff. Overall, I, I would say they're better than Razor of Ocom, but not as good as Atomizer, like right in there. And, and I'm going to end this with Vomoth. As far as I can tell, they only released one song, a single, and it wasn't really a single because it was on a, a compilation, I believe, of the song Beyond the Gate. Uh, they're somewhat related to Horde. They're, a, they're a unblack. Uh, I wish I would hear more. If, if there is more, kindly let me know, please. read a book recently and it, it caused me to think there are a lot of people across the world as far as I can tell from a variety of cultures who hold some sort of belief that the God the earth the, the universe punishes bad people for bad behavior immoral behavior bad doings whether through comma karma or a direct punishment and I even find myself falling into that for example when I become ill it it does cross my mind what what sort of vile behavior did I participate in which which is now the reason that I have fallen to this illness or anything to that effect and I think holding on to that sort of belief causes you to be less empathetic because when you see people who are down and out I think it'll cross many people's minds like, oh, they deserve it. The, the world is punishing them uh, in, in some effect. Uh, and it's just not true. It's absolutely not true. But that's my thought. Kind of off topic here. But maybe it's because all the blood's rushing into my head. I, I'm going to do a video on African black metal next. Uh, I almost have the entire thing written. Uh, I'm going to expand it. Uh, from what I was able to find, it would be a very short video. Uh, but I'm, the bonus section is going to be sizable. Uh, I'm going to give you something to check out. And look for that in a couple weeks. And you know, hit that subscribe button down there. I, I would appreciate it. And, and share this. P pass it on. Show some other people some good music. Thanks. Picture desk. Oi! You fucking cunt!